Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy, all the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. Thanks so much for listening. Today, we are talking about everything from Hurricane Maria and the United Nations to Toys R Us and Pinterest. Plus much more, all in less than 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. Today is Tuesday, September 19th. You ready? Let's do this. Sure enough, Hurricane Maria got stronger, a lot stronger. It's now a Category 5. Remember, there is no Category 6. 5 is the strongest it gets. And Maria is already hitting some small Caribbean islands. Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands will likely get hit tomorrow, so major preps are underway. Keep in mind, many of these same places are already devastated from Hurricane Irma. What, only two weeks ago? The Weather Channel says this is the first time in a decade there's been two Category 5 storms in the same season. So, will Maria hit the U.S. mainland? It's a big question mark right now. Apparently, if it does, it wouldn't happen until next week, but it's still too early to know. For now, all eyes are on the Caribbean islands dealing with it right now. Today, President Trump will take the world stage. He'll be talking at the United Nations General Assembly for the first time. The gathering in New York happens every year and brings together world leaders and diplomats, who, by the way, are reportedly pretty anxious to hear what the president will say today. CNN and Fox News say Trump is expected to rally countries against North Korea. So what else could be on the agenda? Well, the Iran nuclear deal for one. President Trump has not liked it in the past. It's that agreement to lift sanctions on Iran in exchange for the country curbing its nuclear program. And just last night, Iran's president told CNN America will pay a, quote, high cost if the deal is called off. Also, there's been some talk and even a little confusion about the Paris climate deal. One White House official had indicated the U.S. might be open to staying in the deal, but then the White House clarified and said, no, the position has not changed unless other terms are offered. So we'll see. Already yesterday, Reuters reports Trump criticized the U.N. for waste and mismanagement. So more details to come after today's talk. A new show of force against North Korea. The Washington Post reports the U.S. sent more than a dozen warplanes over the Korean peninsula and used live bombs in a drill. It's in response to a few days ago when North Korea sent another missile over Japan. It was one of the most popular toy stores for decades, but now Toys R Us is struggling, big time. Bloomberg reports the company just filed for bankruptcy. Reports blame the company's long-term debt plus competition from places like Amazon. So what's the plan now? Well, the Wall Street Journal says some stores will close, others will focus on creating more experiences that you can't just buy online. Think in-store play areas. All right, other things people may be talking about today. Two sets of protests. First, in Atlanta. The AP says Georgia Tech officials were telling students to stay indoors last night because of violent protests on campus. The protests were after police shot and killed a student over the weekend. Police say the student had a knife and suicide notes were later found. Also, protests continued in St. Louis last night. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch says more than 120 people were arrested over the last couple of days. Protesters are angry because a judge acquitted a former police officer. That ex-cop had been accused of murder in the death of a black man back in 2011. This next story involves wiretapping and secret court orders. And no, it's not the next show on Netflix. CNN cites sources saying the feds wiretapped the former Trump campaign chairman, Paul Manafort. Apparently, the government was snooping before and after the election last year, and even some early this year. Reminder, the FBI's special prosecutor has investigated Manafort for potential dealings with pro-Russia officials. Just when you think things couldn't look worse for Equifax, something else happens. Now, Bloomberg reports the company knew about a hack a full five months earlier. Apparently, this was a different hack than the big one we've all been talking about, but with the same hackers. So yeah, it could mean more scrutiny about what the company did or didn't do to avoid this whole thing. Remember, 143 million accounts of super personal information like social security numbers were compromised, and people don't seem too happy with how the company handled the whole thing. Oh, and this new hack could also mean new questions about top execs and possible insider trading. 
Remember how Amazon is looking for a second headquarters, dubbed HQ2, and the company put out a call for cities to make a pitch? Well, some cities are going all out. Mashable says Tucson, Arizona, for example, cut down a cactus and sent it to Amazon's CEO. The Dallas Morning News apparently made a Spotify playlist for him. Many other cities like Pittsburgh and Kansas City have also made public pitches on social media. And Amazon probably loves this competition in the hopes of getting the most incentives possible. The winning city will get the prize of Amazon's $5 billion investment and something like 50,000 jobs. If you use Pinterest, be on the lookout for a new feature. TechCrunch says it's called Sections. It allows you to better organize your boards into subcategories. Right now, it's in beta testing, but is expected to go out to everyone within weeks. And that's it. You are all caught up and ready to go. You can find the links to all the stories I referenced today at thenewsworthy.com. Just look for today's show notes. If you find value in this, please be sure to subscribe, whether it's on thenewsworthy.com or on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And share it with friends, spread the word, leave reviews, whatever you can do to help others find and enjoy The Newsworthy. And most importantly, come back to me tomorrow. We'll chat again. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.